one of the requirements for your growth mesh and guide curves is that there is only one guide curve per vertex on the growth mesh. And we can look at that a little closer on the Alice model looking at the crown. If we go into wireframe over shaded, you can see here on the crown that there is only one guide per vertex. So when your interpolation of hairs happen, it will happen between all these hairs across the face. And furthermore, when you go into clumping, your clumping is going to clump to the guide as if the guide was the center of the clump. And if we go down to these other parts of the asset as well, if we look at the, the mess asset, it is also one guide per hair, or one guide per vertex. Let's talk a little bit about how guide hairs layer and how important that is. One of the places that you're going to see it the most, if it's incorrect, is on tight hairstyles where the hair is very close to the scalp, such as a ponytail that's pulled back. So if we zoom in, we can see here that the hairs towards the, the forehead are actually staying on top of the inside hairs that are further back on the head. What can happen if this isn't true is that you'll see some crisscrossing in your final groom and it'll look a little, little unnatural and a little strange. So to give you an idea, this is what the correct guides look like. And I've got another example file here of what bad guides look like. So here we have guides that are further back the head protruding out to the top layer. So what happens is when these interpolate, you get all sorts of weirdness when these, uh, when these hairs crisscross. So let's look at the final results over in the Hairworks viewer. Here we have our correct guides. And if I use our visualizer, if I use our visualizer for the crown asset, you can see that the guides are layered really nice and the inside hairs stay on the inside and the outside hairs stay on the outside. If I open up the version with bad layers, also look at the guides. You can see in areas right here and right here where the inside layers are coming out and protruding past the upper layers. And this just doesn't look as clean. And you see a little bit of artifacting when the hair strips pass one another. So these are some things that you might want to avoid. There may be times when this is acceptable, such as messy bits down here. Um, but generally for really dense hair, this is something you, you kind of want to avoid for a good looking hairstyle. And now we can talk about resampling the guides. Your guides are composed of a series of knots or CVs that give the curve a nice fidelity that allows it to maintain the shape of the groom that you gave it with whatever grooming tool that you used. When we feed this to Hairworks, we want to resample the guides with as few of CVs as possible for optimal simulation and rendering. Generally, the straighter your hair is or the shorter your hair is, the fewer amount of CVs that you can use. For example, if I go over to Maya and we look at the mite, this is generally pretty short fur, so we'll resample these at somewhere between two and four. Now, why do I say between two and four? Well, the main hair, or the main fur, on the back of the character, it's pretty straight, it's short, and there's a lot of it. It's pretty dense. So if we use fewer CVs, then we can interpolate more for higher density. So we'll set this to 4. And it's just long enough that we want to maintain a curve and not get any edging. Now, for all these bristly bits along the character's legs, we can set this as low as 2 which is pretty much the root and the tip. It's going to be very thin, it's going to be very sparse, it's not going to be wavy, it doesn't curve much, 
and we pretty much just want it there for some bristly effect. So resampling it too will work out great. Now on the high sampling side of this, if we go to our Madeline character, this character has pretty long hair, and the hair needs to stay pretty close to the crown. It's got a nice curve from the part. It comes around the ear, and we need to maintain all that fidelity. So in this case, we're going to set it to 16. So each guide curve is going to be exported as 16 CVs or 16 knots. You can further optimize this in the Hairworks Viewer or Game Engine with your asset, depending on what styling tricks you're going to do, um, plumping, waviness, um, and these sorts of things. And you can adjust the spline multiplier to keep a higher resampling count under control for good performance. The second thing that determines the smoothness and the shape of a guide curve is the spline multiplier in your general options on the asset. In DCC we exported this asset at 16 CVs per guide. If we turn on our heads up display and we look at the stats, we can see vertices per hair is 61. Roughly four times the number of CVs we sampled at. So these are procedurally added between the sampled CV points to make the hairs more smooth. This also aids in certain attributes like waviness and clumping where the hair is procedurally bent and needs to maintain a smooth shape. However, if you need to make your asset a little bit more efficient, then what we can do is reduce the spline multiplier. So if we remove it by three, we'll be down to about 48 or so CVs. And if and it also gets a little less smooth. We can reduce it down to two. We'll be down to about 32 CVs, give or take. And then if we take it down to one, we'll be at exactly the number of CVs that we sampled at, 16. Now, you can also see that our hair is a little bit more angular and not quite as smooth. So depending on your hairstyle, you might not always want to go down that far. But if your gameplay is out here, then this might be acceptable. So this all depends on where your character is on screen, what your hairstyle is, and what your trade-off is willing to be for the character. For this character, we decided spline multiplier of three was a good place to be. Let's look at the spline multiplier options for the mite. We want to get in here and see things a little bit more broadly and obvious, so I'm going to turn off preview LOD. And first we'll work with the main Hairworks asset, which is all these little tiny furs that are on the legs. They just really needed to be small enough to grab some spec and just have a little hint of color, and they didn't have any waviness or clumping or any bend to them at all. So the spine multiplier is set to 1. And if I look at their control points, you can see they're only made of 2 points. So these are super efficient. But for this case, this is all they needed to be. If I was to turn this up to 4, It really doesn't add a whole lot, and it's going to cost me more in efficiency. If I look at the back hair, and you can see here the hair is pretty wavy. So we have a spline multiplier of 4, which allows for the waviness to be procedurally generated with only 4 CVs. If I take this down to 3, it gets a little more jaggy, and 2 it gets really jaggy and frizzy. And at 1, it's just really straight because there's no room for the waviness to take place. Now, I think for this character, probably a 2 would be acceptable because insect hair can be kind of frizzy. And at this distance, this looks quite acceptable. 